Hello, my friends, and welcome. Welcome back to another session with the older man. Yes, my friends. So today we're going to touch on the massive, massive push for us to be feminized. Yeah, I, I am noticing it everywhere. One of the things about having critical thinking skills and, and having an eye for s social events, combine that with just complete awareness. You can't ignore what's in front of you to say, nah, that's not happening. When the freaking evidence is right in front of you. I'm going to give you an example of that coming up. But, but first, I want to teach you guys one of the most simple but very overlooked critical thinking skills. And it's confirmation bias. All right. What is confirmation bias? I'm sure a lot of you have heard about it before, but confirmation bias is the tendency to search for, interpret or favor and recall information in a way that confirms one's pre-existing belief or hypothesis. In other words, you will always find the results you're looking for if you're looking for it, ignoring others. Okay. Like when someone believes in a particular diet and mainly reads success stories of people who followed it, ignoring those who experienced no benefits at all. But because you're in confirmation bias mode, you're going to only look for people who have been successful on the diet, not even realizing that, hey, 50% of the people that were in the diet never got the same results. They got the absolute opposite result. But because you believe in the diet, you need to confirm that the diet actually works, you will only recall, see, and feel people that will reinforce this idea. And I say this to you because I have to also be conscious when it comes to female nature, when it comes to what I see as the feminization of the entire globe, right? I have to look at all the issues as well. I have to look and see if there's times when I'm not subjected to female information or information that favors females instead of males. Unfortunately, I have been looking and I haven't found any yet because everything around me is constantly based on females' happiness and female satisfaction. And that goes from our laws, that goes from our marriage laws, our sitcoms, newspaper articles, every single thing is based around a gynocentric society. So I need to check my bias if I am biased towards this, right? But the problem is once you start seeing it, you can't unsee it. I'll give you an example. I am open up next Netflix this morning and what do I see? I had to take pictures of all of the videos that were suggested to me right? And I'm not lying, guys. This is just the entire panel right here. Okay. Number one, ballerina, an ex bodyguard with nothing to lose. Her best friend driven to death. She sets out to take down the man responsible, even if it means doing it alone. Action pack and sleek. Next, heart of stone to her elite MI6 team, Rachel Stone, a rookie, they don't know she's a skilled spy for a rogue agency and that her dual lives are about to collide. Number three, Kate. They killed her, but not fast enough. Fatally poisoned and with only hours to live, an elite assassin sets out on a mission to avenge her own murder. And it keeps going. The old guard, four undying warriors, who've secretly protected humanity for centuries, became targeted for their mysterious power, just as they discover a new mortal. Of course, the oldest and most mortal one is the woman. Charlie's Angels. You guys are very familiar with that. <laughs> Don't have to read that. Wing woman. Stealing diamonds. Sniping enemies. Sipping good wine. Carl and Alex are already inseparable. So, what's one more madcap mission amongst best friends? You notice they didn't say Alex and Carl. Carl and Alex. Peppermint. Her family is murdered. A mild-mannered mom remakes self into a badass vigilante in order to exact violent justice. And it keeps going. Thunder Force. Melissa McCarthy. <laughs> okay. In this irrelevant action comedy, Two estranged friends use their newfound superhero powers to protect their city. And it keeps going. Aeon Flux. Wow. You guys know this one. Sentinel. Wow. Transferred home after a traumatizing combat mission. A highly trained French soldier uses her lethal skills <laughs> to 
hunt down the man who hurt her sister. Survivor, framed after a terrorist bombing a U.S. embassy employee on the run in London while trying to stop another pending attack. Bela Javanch and Pierce Brodsman. Notice, she comes first. The ledge. After witnessing the murder of her friend while on a climbing exhibition, a woman must scale a mountain to escape the killers pursuing her. Salt. <laughs> Accused of being a Russian spy, CIA agent Evelyn Salt goes on the run. This is Angelina Jolene. And it just keeps going and keeps going. I... It just kept going. It's my channel, okay? A man, every single action movie that I watch is starring a woman who's going through these amazing things that she could do and just destroying other men. And I tell you guys, this is in my entire feed. It's all action movies that have women kicking men's ass and they're the stars. You tell me that's normal. Tell me that's confirmation bias what I'm seeing. No, it isn't. And so, with this, what, what we will start to see, my friends, is women like this, okay? Here she is, bounced by an alpha male, and she now shows the smaller man holding him back. She shows her dominance, right? Now, here's a woman who decides to take a small man standing next to him, of course. She looks massive. She looks dominant. This bigger guy hits her, but she gets to show her alpha state against a smaller man. Then she strides with these two small men. What are they? What is the politically correct term? Ah, little people? Is that the term that we got to use now? Oh, man. The world that we live in, my friends. Uh, this is freaking nuts, I swear. Here's another video of her disrespecting men again. So she's striding down the sidewalk. Oh, this is a huge guy. Can you imagine if a man did this? If a man ever did this to another man, what would happen? Right? It would be literally war. But women feel just because they have muscles now and they can be masculine that this is what they can do. But this is but this is what's being pushed on us as men. Imagine if that was done to a woman. Imagine if a man just just let's just reverse the roles. Just imagine if a man walked up to a woman's table and just took her drink and just poured all over the ground and just put it back on the table. What would happen? But a man has to show restraint, even though this is a skit. I'm, I'm, I know it's a bloody skit, right? It just shows the contempt and the lack of respect for masculinity. It shows that the woman is now the dominant force in our society, and we men allow it. Me a cougar, me a jaguar, me a every guy. Cause me, my pussy good. Trust me. So you tell me, my friends, should I look at it any other way? Let me know. And that brings us to today's video, my friends. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. I want us to get inside this woman's head because here's another woman who's going to tell us how amazing she is and how she don't need a man. I want you to listen to the words, gentlemen. I want you to listen to this because you're going to learn some crazy lessons here. And ladies, I want you to understand why you should not listen to these women. So the interesting thing about knowing from a young age that you don't want marriage or children is that it automatically decenters men from your life. The three things that men have historically had to offer women, money, marriage, children, are... No, it isn't. It's not just money, marriage, children. It's money and protection. And so a lot of older women are now facing the fact that, holy crap, imagine if I lose my job at 55 and I still have kids in college or I have still have a shitload of bills, mortgage to pay, student loans, etc., etc. Imagine when a woman is in that position, how screwed she's going to be. And that's where we're seeing a lot of women now. Women like her are forcing other women to be single, not realizing the full benefit, full benefit of a man is essential. 
Let's listen. Things that I don't want or need. I have my own money. I have my own job. I have my own house. I have my own car. I have my own friends. I have my own hobbies. I filled my life. She has her own friends until those friends find their significant other and the time with her friends decreases. Unless all of these other items are paid off for her job, she's married to her job. When that job decides to divorce her ass, like I'm explaining now, then it becomes a serious problem because the chances of you losing your job is significantly higher than you losing a man who's devoted to you. Think about it, ladies. With beautiful things that bring me joy and happiness and contentment. I also don't have a giant imaginary biological clock counting down the seconds to my impending infertility. So, so in other words, she's thinking like a man. So technically, she's a man with a vagina. That's pretty much all she's telling us. I'm a man with a vagina, and it is. That's it. What else would a man want to do with her? Hit it, get the hell out. And she don't understand that she's also operating on a bloody clock, an attraction clock. The minute she hit her mid-50s and up, the men that she want, not going to be interested in smashing it. She's just going to be pumped and dumped by the younger guys because she's useless. She's useless to men. I'm not saying that she's not. she's useless to society. She's useless to men men and she's made it very clear that she don't need that man i'm hoping that she see this video and to be fair with you i don't think she's being honest with herself let's hear what else she has to say i don't have to settle down with the operative word being settle you'd think that men would be happy with this that i don't want or need anything from them i just like them for them but what i'm effectively doing is taking away their control over my ability to leave lady you're just so stupid narcissistic you're caught in your own freaking brain you don't understand what feminism have done to you feminism have basically said be what men want pair of open legs with a soft beautiful little wet hole in the middle and that's it there are thousands of men out here who love you to be that and only that you poor fool you don't realize what you're doing you're just giving men what they want men don't care whether you want kids or not they don't want you for that once a man identifies that that's not who you are you're not mother material you're not wife material but you're willing to give him the punani anyway oh, perfect perfect we don't need to control you we know you're on the table Meaning, other men can pick and choose whenever they want. As long as he's in the rotation, still can go home to his wife. <laughs> you're a side chick, my friend. You have no idea what you're saying. You're literally feeding into every single man's desire. A woman that will give herself up without commitment? You're a freaking side chick. That's perfect. And you get on the internet and you advertise this. It's beautiful. What is wrong with you? <laughs> It's crazy. Money, marriage, children. Some men just don't like that at all. Don't get me wrong, I've had some beautiful relationships with men where the thing that tied us together was the fact that we loved and liked each other. But some men really don't like knowing that you would be absolutely fine without them. And I am. I'm not just surviving without a man. I'm thriving. I don't know which men are you talking about. Done. The minute a man knows that you are not in the box of marriage, you become in the box of sex. That's it. Stop trying to freaking fool people. You want a good man. You just can't get one that you want. They're not available to you. So now you're coping. That's all. Without a man. I don't need a man to provide my happily ever after. I provide it for myself every single day. The interesting thing about knowing from a young age that you don't want marriage or children is the fact that you're online telling men that, hey, look at me. I'm a surviving adult. Look at me, guys. I can live on my own like a real adult. I don't need you. Thank you. Ooh, wow. As if men want to just run forward and take care of you. Why, why do you think that? I, I don't get women doing this shit. I really don't. Please tell me that you see what I'm talking about. Why do you think that a man thinks that you should just be given half of his resources, mon just throwing money at you because... You're not offering kids and you're not offering wife material. And he should just throw money at you because he wants to control you. But yet he, he don't have to control you because the Pudani is just there anyway. Please tell me what's wrong with that. That's my dream. If I was a single man, that would be my dream. <laughs> don't get it, man.
Let me hear what my brother says about it. It sure seems like Bragging about basic adult responsibilities as if it's some major achievement is a huge red flag. The reality is, being able to manage your life, pay bills, hold a job, keep a place tidy, those are just baseline expectations for being a functional adult. Yet, some women act like doing the bare minimum is worthy of applause. And let's be real, no one should be patting themselves on the back for simply doing what everyone else does. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. That's it. All right. So now we're going to look at a woman who is having a meltdown because reality has finally slapped the crap out of her right now. Okay. Made a video like this, but I'm sure that a lot of people can relate. It is so hard sometimes watching so many of your friends fall in love and find their person and get pregnant, especially as I'm moving into my 30s. I feel like I'm watching everybody else live out their dream and wondering when my dream is going to happen for me. And a lot of the times people say things like, well, you have to have a full life. A partner is not going to give you that. And I do have a very full life. I love my life. You know, I hate when women say, I do have a full life, but yet complain about the things that they don't have. Just because you're busy doing a lot of shit doesn't mean that your life is fulfilled. You're just doing stuff that does not bring you fulfillment. This is the this is the big disconnect with a lot of women. You you've heard of all the things that she has done and she's doing. My memoirs and my this and my that. You're gonna hear a lot of stuff. But the essential part of her life isn't being fulfilled. Now, gentlemen, understand one thing. And ladies, just so that you know that we know as men, is that all you're doing is advertising the fact that you want a man. The previous woman who's saying, I don't need a man, she's basically advertising that she's strong. And she's hoping that other men will see her and say, Hey, this is a woman that I would love to wife up because she don't need me. That's a certain type of man that she's hoping to attract. This one is saying, oh my God, look, I'm a damsel in distress and I want a man and I'm willing to, <laughs> and I'm in such pain. Oh. <laughs> and she's using that technique to freaking try to manipulate men into coming forth and say, hey, I'll rescue you. Women use all of these techniques. And then you'll get those women who will come on and do the jig, the sexy thing, and blah, blah, blah. Look how sexy I am. Advertising. Every single one of these women, my friend, are advertising their availability. They're just doing it in different ways. So gentlemen, don't get fooled. Okay? Don't get fooled. They're using different methods to just advertise that they are available and they want a man. Let's continue. <laughs> You know, I'm writing a memoir and I have a therapy practice and I have a really beautiful apartment in New York City and I have the best friends and I really do have this massive life, but it feels like there is something major that is missing. I know it sounds wild, but sometimes it feels like I'm missing out on life because I don't have these things yet. I thought I'd be married by now. I thought I'd have multiple kids by now. And this is not just the timeline that society has set on women. This is the timeline that I wanted for myself. I've known ever since I was three years old that I was born to be a mom. And I just want to experience that so bad. And sometimes I wonder and worry, and this is something that I'm working on in therapy, that like something is wrong with me, that I just don't get to have what other people have in that regard. Oh, God. I wish they would stop comparing themselves to other people. This is why women get left at 34, 36, 38 in their 40s and they don't have a man because they're comparing their life to someone else. It's mind-blowing how women think. The group think. The sisterhood, the thinking. Oh, that woman got BBL. I need to get a BBL. Oh, she got Botox. I'm getting Botox. Oh my God, this fashion is out. Oh, I got to get into that fashion trend. Men don't do that. We don't group think. We think in hierarchy. He's the boss. I follow him. All right. He's showing some good leadership skills. Good. I'll follow him. He's messing up. I'll stop following him. <laughs> That's the reality of how men think. Oh, look, he looks nice in that. I wouldn't look that nice in it, so I'm not even going to look at wearing that. I'm not saying all men, but the large, large majority of men think like that. But it doesn't matter whether the woman is a freaking 300-pound whale or she's a skinny size too. She thinks that she could still get into a bikini. We see it each and every day because women group think. Uh, it's frustrating to watch. I feel sorry for certain women, but... 
Man, I hope they're listening to more channels like this and just wake up a bit, you know? This is not about me needing someone to fix me or to make me happy. As humans, we are wired to want to connect with others. And sometimes it feels like I'm starving for this piece of my life. And that feeling can be so hard when you look around and you see everyone else with their plates super full, whether it's like weddings, baby shower, TikTok couples. I just cannot wait to meet my person and to have a family. And it just scares me so much. <laughs> Like worrying about if it will happen and when it will happen and then i get worried even talking about this on here like if i'm speaking this aloud does that mean it's not going to happen for me and i just don't believe that that's true and maybe that's why i'm posting this we're allowed to have our feelings about things and we're allowed to process things and we're allowed to have wants and needs and it doesn't mean that we're sending a message to the universe it's just hard and if anyone else out there relates i would love to hear from you oh my dear we hear you we hear you. But you sound like an emotional wreck and most men, most strong men will stay away from that. Okay? You've been through too much trauma. You've waited too long. You, you fell for the whole mantra, I got time. Listen, I will keep pushing this one message. There's only two things women got to worry about. And men as well, but women more importantly. Is it important and is it urgent? Things that are important never put it off until it becomes urgent okay your youth having a child these are important to you find the best man when you're in your youth and have your kids early as possible all right then it does not become urgent when it becomes urgent and important that's when the nightmare like this happens the stress the the the, the desperation men can smell that pookie can smell that oh yeah he's gonna be right in there to take advantage of you ray ray he's gonna be right in there yeah baby girl i'm gonna be there for you love bomb the shit out of you throw a couple of seeds in there he's out that's when you are desperate then you'll just end up another baby mama so my friends and listen it's not like this is just conducive to the west my friend i saw this video here on a girl explaining what's going on in China. Let, let, let's, let me pull it up. This is just a good one to close this session out. Typical cases like the guys would go on blind date talking to girls was like, those typical cases like the guys would go on blind date talking to girls was like, I know you're, you guys are so desperate, so desperate to marry a guy. They'll say yeah, that. Yeah, kind of they say that in front of their face. Why do you think that is? Because again, ratio would dictate that if there are more girls, then I can see that, right? Would well, there are more guys, so that, wouldn't they go after girls more? But I have to put it in a reality in Shanghai. Rich girls are here, right? right and right. there's rich guys. Okay. For rich guys, they have all the options over yeah. here. But for the rich girls, they only have this kind of options. Right. They don't want to go down. What about, yeah. what about regular girls that are not rich? And regular girls are like this. Right. So they, they're always looking like this. They're always looking they're up. all yeah. up. And for these guys, they have this kind of options over here. So that's what... But and they're here. They want to have these girls right. call their attention to look at us. But they're actually looking up to here. So basically, <laughs> if you're a regular guy, you're screwed. Those typical cases like the guys would t go on blind date talking to girls. was like, I know you're, you guys are so desperate. So Hypergamy, my friends. Hypergamy. The woman, the average woman are looking for the wealthiest men and the average guys are getting screwed. Now, the average woman have reached that desperate stage, urgent and important, remember? They're in the desperation mode, and they're going out on dates, and these men are saying, yeah, I know you're desperate. <laughs> That's cold, man. That's cold. <laughs> Welcome to the world of dating, my friends. Oh, my friends. Well, listen, I'm going to wrap it up there. Hey, if you need any critical thinking and, and practical advice and navigating this dating market book a session with me let's have a chat let me see if i can help you guys out okay so my friends until next time remember whenever in doubt always always ask an older man i'll see you in the next one cheers